Let's get to our good friend Mark Meckler of the Convention of States. He's got an effort going on right now to open the states. Good to see you, Mark. How are you? Excellent. I'm, you can see I'm in my coronavirus beard here, trying to go along with the look. Indeed, we are here amidst billowing clouds of coronavirus-infested air ourselves, Mark, and uh, very excited about f- further infestation. So, Mark, my first question, brother, is why do you hate your grandparents and what did they ever do to you? You know, my parents are in their 80s and they're smart enough to be on lockdown themselves. We're quarantined. In fact, I just became a fugitive. I traveled to Michigan grabbed my daughter's stuff from Hillsdale College, drove her all the way back to Texas. So we're separated from my parents for a couple of weeks. This is what I call common sense compliance. We're using our common sense. We're doing the things we know to stay safe. We don't need the government to force us to do it. Mm. Did you look at flying to Michigan? Because those prices are really cheap right now, brother. I was actually really blessed. I had a friend that wanted to get some hours in. So we did fly, but we got to fly private out there to Michigan gotcha. and then rented the U-Haul and drove back. Governor Whitmer wasn't there. Nurse Ratchet, you can get quarantined right when you landed. <laughs> we kept the, the U-Haul dark the whole way out. We went out here <laughs> to cover up darkness with candles inside. We we're worried about being caught. We we're fully camouflaged and we just beeline for the border. Just so you know, in Michigan, you can no longer disguise yourself as uh, as a seeding or pottery or or potting plant company. That that actually you're the you're the number one uh fugitive in the state of Michigan now. Uh if you if you try to use that for your disguise, you'll have to come up with something else next time. I think you can describe her best. We call her Witless Whitmer around here because I mean the woman is dumb as a stump. It's absolutely incredible and there's nothing worse than a dumb tyrant. So let's get to that then. Yesterday, we had uh, Tennessee, Georgia, um, and Georgia, none of these states, not even New York City, has been hit as hard as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation forecasted they were all going to be. But uh, as it relates to most of the rest of the country, Georgia has been hit harder than most of the rest of the country. And still, its Governor Kemp came out yesterday, what I thought a very... Uh, a, a prudently aggressive is maybe the way I would describe it, a prudently aggressive plan of getting his state back to normal. West Virginia, which was one of the last states to record a coronavirus case, just in the last hour, their governor has said, all right, enough is enough. Um, so we're beginning to organically see these kinds of efforts. So where does open the states come in? What do you guys want to see? What's the mission? Look, I think it's exactly what you're saying. When you were around at the beginning of the Tea Party movement, A lot of people will say I'm one of the people who helped start it. It's not really true. What we did is we provided a place for this organic movement that was bubbling in America to reside online. And that's what OpenTheStates.com is. People can go there. They can click on their state. They can see what the efforts are going on in their states. We're going to shortly have news feeds there. So they'll see all the news about their states and what's going on nationally. There'll be forums there that people can participate in. This is just a place for folks to reside online safely away from the censorship of Facebook, where they can communicate with other people in this movement to get the states and their municipalities to open up in a wise and prudent way. So I just went through, my wife just sent me something that our home state of Iowa is initiating, and that's to amp up its testing. And the, and they want you to take a questionnaire to to have you be screened if you should take a a test for SARS-2 coronavirus or COVID-19. And My concern with this approach, and our governor has been a good governor, okay? She's been a lot better governor than I thought she was going to be. And she's like been, and and I and I, I don't want to put it that way because my expectation levels for politicians in general is really low. So that almost seems like faint praise. She's been an objectively good governor, all right? I, let me just put it that way. She's been an objectively good governor. But I am I am concerned about the way that she is messaging this testing that they're looking for symptomatic people or people who might be, um, um, uh, you know, uh, pre-symptomatic. Because if if you're waiting your test on the symptomatic, which is what we did in this country for the first month, and I get it, you know, we, we had to see what the mortality rate was and get this thing under control. I understand that. But for the first month, Mark, half of all testing in America was done in New York State. Well, if you're going to, if, if half of all your testing is done in the state where the number one hot zone is, All of your numbers are going to be biased towards the negative because that's who you're primarily testing, right? Right. And so my concern is in our state, as far as I know anyway, there's no active antibody testing being done. And so instead we want to screen, we're now going to actively look for people who think they may have it. And if you do that without without the accompanying antibody test, I think you know where where I'm going with this. 
yeah. We're going to get a one-sided, oh my goodness, I cannot believe this huge spike in cases in Iowa. Well, anytime you test for anything, you're going to get more of it. It doesn't tell me necessarily if I've if if, if I'm if I'm past symptomatic or I'll never get symptoms, it doesn't, we're not going to find out the word antibody. I just took the online screening during the break. So, to, so I could walk myself through this. The word antibody is never featured anywhere in any of the online screening at, at all. So if we're going to base in Iowa, whether to reopen the state based on that sample, it's going to give us the most negative numbers possible. Yeah, look, and I think this has been the problem from the start. I think the testing is being done incorrectly. Of course, it's important to know if you're symptomatic Get a test so you know you're not out infecting people. But the antibodies are what are most important because that tells us what percentage of the population has been infected with the disease and is now immune to the disease. And really, if you want to prevent a continuing pandemic, you need a firewall. You And the firewall is us, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's a human firewall. And what I mean by that is the more people who've been infected, the more people who can't infect others. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we want people to be able to go out back into society. What we want to see is... Do we have a lot of people who've been infected and now cannot infect others, cannot carry the disease? That's what we should be focusing on right now. That's what's going to give us a realistic picture of what our country looks like. For example, they just closed one of the big lakes here in my hometown of Des Moines. I mean, my daughter and her boyfriend have gone down there walking around for miles several times. I mean, to me, I think that's actually the dumbest thing they could do. We need to do the exact opposite. We need to get more people out in the sun, in the warmth, particularly because who's going to go out there? The healthier people, the younger people with all those vibrant immune systems, they're going to be the most inclined to be out there. Keeping them all at home is delaying the process that you're describing. Yeah, look, and I think there's one more step to this in the analysis that's really important. This is the one that most politicians aren't willing to talk about, and that is what it's doing to us to stay home, what it's doing to our economy. Of course, I think that's obvious. We have the largest economic devastation we've seen in the history of the United States of America. Nobody knows ultimately how this unfolds. We do know 22 million people filing for unemployment in the last three weeks. We do know millions upon millions of small businesses shuttered a lot of them may be permanently, I've heard stats, 30% will never reopen. It's remaking our economy. What's really important about that, Steve, are the health effects, stress, people engaging in substance abuse at much higher rates, depression at much higher rates, spousal abuse, child abuse. You lock people in their home and you tell them there's no hope of going back to work anytime soon, then we're going to have a real health epidemic that unfolds out of that. Mark, in New York City, 4.9% of the deaths there from coronavirus are to people uh, 44 and younger, 4.9%. 73 uh, point something percent of the deaths were to people 65 and older. And among them, 80% of them had pre-morbidity or a pre-existing condition of some kind. Why have we kept all of those people then, with all of that health, kept them at home, and within indoor climate controlled environments where studies from now four different countries show that's actually where SARS viruses are the most contagious is in those kinds of environments. Look, because fear is a better narrative than anything else. It spreads more quickly. Fear is like a virus. And so when you promote fear, when you promote panic, Prudent people get scared. A lot of people get panicked. And so they want to stay home there. They become malleable. That's when the people become sheep if you make them scared. And that's largely what's happened here. And, and by the way, I'm not imputing bad motive. I think a lot of this has been driven by medical professionals. And we have to remember the medical professionals only job is to protect health to protect life. It's not to balance with anything else. It's not to worry about, you know, if you're if you're a doctor in a hospital, you're not worried about the psychological aspects of economic devastation. You're not thinking about addiction. You're not thinking about unemployment. So we need a balance. We haven't had a balance. All we've had is fear, fear, fear. And and one more thing, Stephen, I think this is really important. A scientist in Israel now has come out with a study showing what happened in countries where they locked down versus ones they didn't. And the progression of the disease is exactly the same. Peak at six weeks, flatlining roughly at eight weeks, regardless of whether it's total lockdown or almost no lockdown. How do we explain Florida? I've been asking that question for, for the last couple of weeks. 
They were one of the last states that put a shelter in place. My home state of Iowa still doesn't have one, but Florida was one of the last states that did have one to put one in place. Uh, Governor DeSantis was blistered all across the media for it. Uh, Look at all these spring breakers doing body shots off their butt cracks, right? We saw those viral videos and all these old people, the second largest elderly population in America lives in Florida. They're all going to die. They kept Disney World open too long, et cetera. And yet we've yet to see Florida become outside of Dade and Broward counties. We have yet to see Florida become the smoldering ash that we were promised. How do you explain that given its demographics? To me, I think the logical explanation is it's pretty much sunny and warm everywhere in Florida year round. And the virus, does, the SARS viruses don't like warmth and sun. We need to get our people outside out of their homes. Yeah, look, and that's backed up by what's happened in our southern hemisphere. So the southern hemisphere now moving into their winter as we move into our spring and summer. And what we saw is not much of the coronavirus in the southern hemisphere in the beginning. It's starting to ramp up down there in the southern hemisphere because it's getting cooler and people are moving indoors. So in climates where it's warmer, uh, it's, it's actually warmth and humidity the virus does not do well. So if you go to Florida, what do you get? You've got a warm, humid climate. You would expect less SARS cases across that state, less coronavirus across the state. And so I think this is important. We have to look at these on a on a one-off basis. What's going on in a state? And even within a state, what's going on in a county? Kansas is in total lockdown. Mm-hmm. And the majority of counties in Kansas have experienced exactly zero cases. Why is the whole state locked down? This is the kind of problem that people are reacting against. This is why we have opened the states. I mean, if you've lived in New York, if you didn't live in one of those five boroughs, if you lived in Albany or Rochester, you, by and large, other than you can't go anywhere, you would not know what this is about. Because even even in that state, as terrible as it's been, it's not New York City has not been the entire state. So if I go to if I go to openthestates.com, what happens? What do I need to look for when I go there? So there's two reasons to go there. One is if you want to know what's going on in your state or anywhere in the country, there's a map there. It's interactive. Click on your state. It'll show you the groups that are organized there. We're not organizing the groups. This is just spontaneous citizen organization. You're going to be able to connect to those groups, figure out if there are protests going on, find out what's going on in other states. The second thing, and this is really important, a very easy way to let the president know, the vice president, to let Congress know the governors, lieutenant governors, and state legislators know what you think about this, that you want to see some restrictions lifted, that you think people should be able to trust their common sense. And see, this is really important. I'm not telling people to violate CDC guidelines. That's not what we're doing. In fact, we say, use your common sense, be smart, practice an attitude of defiance. You shouldn't like it when the government's imposing on you. Whether the government's right or not, that attitude of defiance should exist. It defines us as Americans. But practice common sense compliance. If you're out in public, I don't recommend getting together in big groups. Wear a mask if you're going to be close to people. Stay at least six feet apart. These are the CDC guidelines. You know, don't be the idiot that gives the media the narrative that you're going around kissing people on the cheek or whatever. Mm -hmm. Be smart, but be defiant. Are you guys keeping people up to date state by state on where their state is at when it comes to uh, reopening, freedom, regulation, et cetera? Yeah, we are. We'll be having, and there will be 50 state by state pages. People will be able to keep up the news on their own state right there or look at other states and, and do a comparison. This is in development right now. We threw it up as quickly as we could last week. There's another iteration probably coming out tomorrow. So it'll get more and more sophisticated. We're really worried about Facebook shutting these groups down. You know, Mark Zuckerberg came out and said, mm-hmm. bottom line, is, as long as it's legal, we'll let you do it. Well, that means in every state with a stay-at-home order, if groups intend to protest, that's illegal. They're ultimately going to get kicked off of Facebook. So if you want to know what's going on, go to openthestates.com. Mark Meckler, openthestates.com. Good to see you, my friend. Take care. Thank you, Steve. You bet. Thoughts, gentlemen. Aaron, you get to go first this time. Yeah. um, The attitude of defiance that we talked about there uh, towards towards the end, that that is what what we've what we've got to achieve. And unfortunately, I, I don't see that enough. I think the perfect example of that this week were the skateboarders in L.A., or I don't know if it was L.A., but Southern California, when they had their their half pipes filled in with sand, they actually converted mm-hmm. it into a dirt bike track. Yes, yes. That's perfect. That's, that, now, that's a kind of a benign uh, look at, 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 um, at, at this attitude that we're talking about. 
But my goodness, my goodness, the number of people, it seems, that are more who are more than willing and that that number is dwindling every day, but who are more than willing to just take it lying down. Essentially, it's it's pretty disheartening to see. And it's only propagated and perpetuated by uh, people who are who are, for whatever reason, completely sold out to the doomsday saying completely sold out to the panic. And I, I don't know where you go to break through that. But good grief. It's got to it's got to happen sooner than later. You think talk? Well, brilliant. Tactically to do this open of the states. I mean, obviously, uh, he's doing it because he believes in it, but you you plant that flag here doing open the states because uh, post-election, uh, you're going to have an opportunity with convention of the states like you've never had before, potentially, because of how people's are have been reoriented to what's important, what's fundamental because of this. It's, it's really going to be interesting to see how much that organization is able to make uh, lemonade out of these lemons. I think one of the big headlines that we're learning today, and this is there's been more coming out just since we've been on the show this this, this afternoon, is the is the mutation level of the virus, and it and it goes to why I told you from day one, <clears throat> pardon me, I, I told you from day one I thought the odds of there never being a vaccine were far higher than the odds you would get one in twelve to eighteen months. Why the just hunker down at home and keep printing paper money to stay out of debt strategy until the vaccine magically shows up, wasn't going to, wasn't likely to pay off. At some point we're going to have to understand it, that there aren't perfect outcomes east of Eden. And how did previous generations that, that were confronted with Spanish flu and polio viruses, how, you know, how, how did they reconcile those harsh realities of life here, this side of heaven, with the fact they still had lives to live. How did they do that? We need to start taking some more pages out of that. We're now getting more and more studies showing that the SARS-2 coronavirus mutates rapidly, which is exactly what its predecessor did, which makes creating a vaccine very difficult. And it also means it's unlikely to come soon. So at some point, we just need to stand up to fear. Do it prudently, but we have to say no. John 3, 17. Go to conventionofstates.com, press the button, sign the petition. More importantly, get 10 of your friends to do the same. When you sign the petition, then that sends a letter to your state legislator. You go on the list in their district as a supporter. We deliver those lists to the state legislators. It means something to them.